I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do some yarn dip dyeing into two different fluorescent colors. We're going to dip dye some sock yarn into some jacquard black light blue and jacquard fluorescent yellow. Now I've done some color mixing with these colors and know we get gorgeous fluorescent greens from the combination. And I don't know if we're going to end up with a colorway today where we'll still see some yellow and some blue, or if we're going to have more of a green fluorescent gradient, but I'm excited to play with these colors, dip dye, and just create something really beautiful. Now, fluorescent yellow is a primary, it is a fluorescent yellow pigment. But black light blue is a mixture of a blue acid dye with a colorless fluorescent acid dye. There isn't a blue fluorescent acid dye molecule. Today we're going to dye some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I have pre-soaked it in some plain tap water for an hour or so. So it's nice and saturated, but there is no acid in the yarn yet. We will be adding the acid to everything in our dye bath. If you wanna learn more about the tools or equipment I'm using for my video today, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description, and I may earn a commission if you make purchases through one of my affiliate links. In my eight quart dye pot, I am currently heating up 16 cups of water, and I'm going to go ahead and add four tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, this should be enough acid for the black light blue to all strike. I have dip dyed yarn into black light blue in the past and I didn't observe any breaking between that colorless fluorescent acid dye pigment and the blue. The fluorescence gradient that we had in our yarn seems similar to the amount of visible blue that I saw. But we're going to start with that color uh, once we get a little bit warmer. I have about 75 milliliters of my 1% stock solution of black light blue. And so that's how much dye I'm going to use. I will be honest, I wish I had a little bit more, but we can always do this again another day. We're going to dip dye 200 grams of yarn, which is why this really, really is not that much color. I mean, you can see that our blue will not be very bright. I expect that our yellow is going to be a dominant color here today. I paused for a moment while my dog needed to bark. Now normally I don't recommend just sort of sitting and pausing when you're dip dyeing because then you could end up with a line. Um, but we don't have that much pigment in here so I don't think it's gonna be a huge issue. I have a feeling that our final yarn will end up being very, very yellow leaning, but I'm also okay with that. Uh, my plan is to eventually move the zip ties 180 degrees, uh, so that way the lightest end that we have here is the first that we dip dye into the yellow. But you can see that after, it's only been a minute and a half since I started filming this clip, uh, we have almost absorbed all of this dye. Now, I think that the yellow is going to absorb a lot slower uh, than this blue, but I think I'm going to go ahead, um, because it's okay if we get a little bit in here, I'm going to add these ends. They're sticking out a little bit. That's fine. It might sink in, but I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for five minutes, and then we'll talk about our yellow. Okay, it's been five minutes, ah, and we get a little uh, color transfer from the yarn in the pot onto our yarn there. If I had removed the yarn and kept the lightest area se separate, we would have been able to avoid that, but it's just interesting, and I do have a video where I talked about how to avoid that um, that you can go and check out. I feel like normally I would dip dye into yellow and then blue, so I'm really enjoying this order. But here is our black light, and you can see our glow, even though I still have my overhead lights on. Oh. And now we did remove the yarn, so there's not a lot of fluorescence up there. There is less fluorescence as we go through, but still, I'll never get tired of that. 
even while the yarn is warm, I'm going to take the zip tie and move it all the way down 180 degrees to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing here, even though I may not be entirely on camera, but by picking up the yarn where the zip tie was on one side, that helps me get it uh, approximately 180 degrees down um, our loop. And now we can go get ready to dip dye into the yellow, but I'll put my gloves back on. <laughs> I have a little bit over 100 milliliters of the fluorescent yellow, and we're going to go ahead and use it even though I considered only doing 75 as well. I am trying to use up some leftover dyes that I mixed a few weeks ago, so this works. Now I'm gonna quickly stir things up and we're gonna bring over our warm yarn to start dip dyeing. Now this time as we dip dye, uh, we have acid in our yarn, so that could in theory cause some color to strike a little bit faster than what we had the first round. But also we're dealing with a neon fluorescent color and those typically take a little bit longer to strike anyway. But you can see we're already getting a lovely, lovely green. Ooh! Okay, wait, I need to wait one second. I'm gonna bring over more acid quickly. We're gonna do another four tablespoons of white vinegar because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep some of the blue. And I'm okay if I don't. I'm okay if it all goes green, but I wanted to give a slightly better shot. Oh, this is so, so pretty. Oh man, now I fully expect the yellow end to be brighter fluorescence wise than our blue. Ooh, but we may end up with a teal at the end. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I do think I'm gonna add the yarn all the way in. Oh, I'm really, I don't know if I've ever, I've ever dip tied into a fluorescent yellow before. But this is working so well. Okay, we only have a tiny bit of yellow left, but I am gonna add the rest of the yarn into our pot. And we're gonna just wait and see what happens and what kind of colors we get here. But I am gonna wait for 30 minutes uh, and I will reduce the heat a little bit so we don't get a vigorous boil. But I will see you in 30 minutes and we'll see where we are with our yarn. But right now I can say I am so excited. It's been 30 minutes and we don't have a ton of blue left here at the edge. There's some hints of it, especially as we pick this up, but our yellows did travel up, which is not a bad thing. There's a hint of some yellow left here in the pot, but I'm gonna let that be and we're gonna set this yarn aside. I know I should wait to bring over the black light because for you, it'll just be a couple of minutes before you get to see it. But for me, it'll be days because I need to wait for the yarn to dry uh, before I film those conclusions. And so even with my overhead light still on, oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Ooh, what's funny is like up here, you can really, really see where that yellow has like tr is on the blue. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Uh, that really shows up. And the blue is fluorescent, but next to the yellow, it almost looks like it's not. Uh, so that is also just a little bit interesting. But anyway, we'll get a better look at this once everything is dry. Now, I don't think that the fluorescent yellow interacts negatively with that colorless fluorescent acid dye molecule. I just think that yellow is brighter to start with and we had more of it than we do of the blue. So I think if I remove ambient light and go into my closet, uh, we'll have a little bit easier time seeing some of the blue glow. But in white light, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful colorway and one I'm very excited about. So now I'm gonna go and let this cool completely so then we can wash it. Let's wash our dip dyed yarn 
and it feels like it's glowing in just the light of my kitchen. Oh, it's so fun. This is such a gorgeous color. I think that if I were to take, with the exception of this little bit of blue that we have left at the top, if I were to take jacquard chartreuse and fluorescent yellow, we could potentially end up with something a little similar. But we do have this touch of blue down here. Oh, but these greens are just beautiful. I added some clear dish soap to this dye bath and I'm optimistic because we're seeing no bleeding. That makes me super happy. Oh, you know what this color reminds me of? A much more electric version of one of the of the very first 100% wool yarn I ever dyed. Uh, a yarn that I used in a color work hat that I wear all the time. It reminded me a lot of like that, even though lemonade Kool-Aid is not that yellow. It's not that fluorescent. But anyway, I'm, I've rinsed out the soap. So now we can go put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can see what our finished yarn looks like. This color is practically glowing under the white light. It is so vibrant, so neon, and especially in our most yellow and more green areas. The blue, even at the deepest end, is a little bit more pastel, but this color is glorious. I don't know if we need to go into the closet or, oh my gosh, is the glow here will glow without it. But you know, it is so interesting. I mean, the over there, it's so bright that it is like blown out on camera. But you can come and see some more pastel areas over here. And that's just really interesting to me. The areas that aren't glowing as much, these darker areas are still glowing. They have that black light blue. There's a glow to it. It's just compared to the yellow, it isn't very, very much at all. But all in here, I do feel the fluorescence. It's just the bright yellow is super, super bright. And this is not a surprise because with any of the depths of shade of neon colors I've done over the years, yellow is by far, by far the brightest. And that is even if we had the colors at a one-to-one -one ratio, which we didn't. I don't remember the ratio. I, I do think we had more blue compared to our yellow, but I don't remember. The other thing I do want to note is that at our most blue end, we see that the yellow sort of goes in and out. If I had finished dip dyeing the yarn, removed it, and then gone to steam set it, we would have had a more complete gradient of color. This occurred because there was some pigment that hadn't bound to yarn yet, and so when the yarn was touching itself, we got some transfer within the kettle, which is fine, it is beautiful, but I do have another video where I talked about how to avoid this and remedy it if that is something that you care about. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I love, 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 love playing with neon fluorescent colors. Something about just turning on the black light and watching the glow makes me so happy. But it is funny that here with the ambient light, you really don't feel the blues glowing as much as you do when I remove more of the white light. The yellow just drowns them out. I wanna play with black light blue and fluorescent yellow more and use them at a ratio where we have five times as much of the blue as yellow so we can get some of like beautiful fluorescent teals. Oh, I think that that would be so much fun. But also, if you want a more intense blue, it could be worth just going to a non-fluorescent blue. Because if under white light you want that blue to pop more, I think that you shouldn't worry about losing the fluorescence because since the yellow is so much more bright anyway, maybe it doesn't make it that big of a difference. But I have plans to play around with this more, and I hope you're excited to see me play around with this more in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.